Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. And what we're going to talk about in this video is how to create an IPsec site-to-site -site VPN between a Unify OS console and a GCC uh, convergence appliance, the GCC firewall, or a GWN router. So from the Unify side, this is all going to be the same. And whether you're using a GWN 7002 or 3 or a GCC 6010, 6011, 6010W, this is all going to work the same. So let's take a look at what we want to accomplish. So right here we have a little bit of a map. And you can see we've got our GCC over here and our Unify console over here. We've got the internet in between. And what we want to do is we want to be able to access the LAN of each of these devices from the other site. So we're going to create a VPN. I've got static IPs from the lab on the WAN interfaces of these devices. You can see that the GCC is .98 and the Unify OS console, which in this case is a Unify UDMSE, is .99. Now, in a non-lab environment, you are probably gonna have an internet routable IP address. And what do I mean by that? So it's gonna be a non-192.168, a non-10 dot something address, and a non-172.16 through 172.31 address. You might have a CGNAT address, which usually starts with, you know, 100 dot, which if you're using a non-static IP address on a cellular carrier, you're probably going to have CGNAT. Um, if you're using Starlink without the business package and a, static I, and, and a static IP, you'll probably have CGNAT. In this case, this will not work. That's another type of VPN that we need to set up to get that going. In most of the cases, this is going to work. Now, the other thing to uh, know is that with both the GCC or GWN router or a Unify OS console, you're going to be able to use fully qualified domain names or FQDNs instead of specifying a WAN IP and uh, on the remote side. And the way that you uh, can do that is if you're using a dynamic DNS service to you know, connect that DDNS name, that dynamic DNS fully qualified domain name to your WAN IP, it gets updated and you can use that instead. I like that we're moving away from having to have static IPs and that more and more devices are using or giving us the ability to use fully qualified domain names for these, these types of things. Um, we can also create firewall rules that way. So if that's something you're interested in, let me know down below. So what we're going to do is we're going to get started with this. We're going to start on the um, we're going to start on the UDM SE side, and then we're going to match the settings to on the Grandstream side to the UDM. You could do this either way. You could flip flop it, but I'm going to start on the UDM, and then we're going to match the settings on the GCC. So the first thing we're going to do is in the UDM SE, we're going to go to settings. We're going to click our little hamburger here. We're going to go down to VPN, site-to-site -site VPN, and by default, it's set on IPsec. If you want to see an open VPN site-to-site -site video, let me know down in the comments. So this we're going to call 2GCC. We're going to create a very simple pre-share key. Um, since this is a lab environment, if things go south and we got to troubleshoot it, like if this doesn't work and I have to troubleshoot it, I want this to be the least of my concerns, right, this pre-shared key. Now, here on my local IP, which is my WAN IP, you can see it's warning me that this is a NATed IP address, and it tells you that if you're able to forward those ports from your upstream provider to the, the WAN IP on this, that you'll need to do that. This is all internal, so we don't have to do that, but it is nice that they recognize that it is a NATed IP. Our remote host is going to be the WAN IP address or fully qualified domain name of our GCC. In this case, it's the .98 address. We're going to go down here, and we want to be able to get to the 192.168.80 network. It's a full slash 24. So we'll add that for our remote networks. And down here, you can see that uh, we've got a lot of auto settings, like uh, perfect forward secrecy, PFS, local and remote auth, things like that. We're going to leave that, and we're going to match the GCC side. So now we're going to come over to the GCC, and whether you're using a GCC or a GWN, this 
router interface is going to look the same. If you're in a GCC, of course, you're going to have all the other things up there, like the advanced firewall, the phone system, fast provisioning, all those things. If you're in a GWN router, this is what you're going to get. So we're going to go to VPN, IPsec, site to site, and we're going to click Add. And here we're going to call this to unify. We'll enable it. We're going to put the WAN IP or fully qualified domain name of the uh, UDM in there. So that's the dot 99. Now this interface, if you're on a uh, device that has multiple WAN IPs, so the GCC has that enabled by default and the SFP cage or the SFP port is WAN 1 and WAN 2 is your ethernet. Make sure you're selecting the correct interface. Otherwise, this isn't going to work. You're going to be troubleshooting it and probably ripping your hair out. Now, I've disabled WAN 1 because I'm not using that SFP port, so I only have WAN 2 here. So I'm going to select that. We're using Ike version uh, 1, and that's what it's using over here on the Unify side. Down here, we're going to put in our pre-shared key. Do a sanity check on that. Now, this is where we've got to change our encryption and our hash. So we're going to drop this down to AES-128, SHA-1, Diffie-Hellman-14. We're going to leave the local and remote ID um, blank for auto. If you are not specifying it on the Unify side, but you specify it on the Grandstream side, there's a good chance that this VPN could have some hiccups. So you'd have to play around with that. My suggestion is to leave that blank. Um, and then move on. Now we do have dead peer detection and what that does is typically these VPN tunnels can time out if we don't have any interesting traffic and what interesting traffic is is it's just traffic that is destined for the other side of the the tunnel for one of those remote subnets that we we want to talk to. Now here you can have it clear, restart, do all those things. You might want to depending on what your application is make sure that that tunnel is always up and available. Down here under our phase two, we're going to specify our local subnet, which is that 80 subnet, and that is a slash 24. The local source IP, if we have multiple VLANs that we're routing, we could, um, or a different VLAN that we're routing, we would put that layer three interface in there. We only have the one VLAN, which is VLAN one, which is untagged. We only have that here uh, on this device, so we're just going to put that interface 80.1. Then the remote subnet that we want to get to is the 192.168.1.0 network, and it is that class C. Down here, we've got to uh, change our algorithms again to match the other side, and PFS is disabled, but we're going to hit group 14 on that. And I'm going to click Add on the Unify side first because it's got to go through its provision process. So I'm going to click Add there. And then I'm going to click Save. You can see that the UDM should be provisioning any second. And once that happens, the VPN should connect. There we went to a provision status, and now we are connected. So how do we know we're connected, and how do we know this is working? So we've got this AI Pro camera sitting at 192.168.1.206. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to disable this VPN. So now you can see it's disconnected. We're going to go down here to Maintenance, System Diagnostics. We're going to go to our ping tool, and we want IP version 4. We're going to put in 192.168.1.206. We're going to leave the interface at Auto, and we're going to click Start. It's going to try to fire off five uh, ICMP packets across, and you can see that five transmitted, zero received, 100% packet loss. So now we're going to go back to our VPN IPsec and we're just going to hit the little enable toggle. Now you can see we have a connecting status. Once everything is negotiated, this little connecting status should go from connecting to connected. That green, boom, there it is. So now we're going to go back to our maintenance system diagnostics, back to this same ping screen. We're going to put that same IP address back in there and we're going to hit start. It's going to send five packets again. It's going to see if it can talk to it. And you can see right here, we sent five, we received five to 0% packet loss. So this VPN is now connected. If you've got any questions about this, let me know down in the comments. If you've got, uh, like I said, questions, comments, uh, 
I'll try to clarify anything that I can down below. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, comment, share, follow me on Twitter and TikTok. Those links are down below, along with affiliate links, a Patreon link. And if you need IT consulting, head on over to willyhow.com, fill out the contact form that's right there on the front page, and somebody will be in touch with you as soon as possible. You can also go over to community.willyhow.com, sign up, ask questions over there, join the community. We've got a great group of people. Once again, I'm Willie. I want to thank you for being here. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.